Welcome to On Location. Today we meet with Ken Samples, a scholar and lecturer for Reasons to Believe, a science faith research ministry dedicated to the daily discovery of new astounding facts and reasons to have faith in Jesus through the wonders of creation. We joined Ken together with founder Hugh Ross at Gunnersbury Baptist Church, where Ken ministered and spoke to us. Well, I was raised in what I would call a nominal Catholic family, and we went to church on Easter and Christmas and the most important days of the year, so to speak. But I really grew up not knowing or really understanding Christianity. I mean, Jesus was a person that I had heard many good things about and held in high regard. But I didn't understand uh, the depth of Christian theology or, or even the value system that, that accompanies it. And so uh, it wasn't until I was a sophomore in, in college that uh, my older sister, who had uh, become a Christian, uh, she gave me a book by C.S. Lewis, uh, Mere Christianity. And uh, that book had a remarkable impact on me. I, for the first time, I thought, wow, I didn't know that a Christian could be that thoughtful and careful and deliberate. And I appreciated Lewis's arguments, particularly the moral argument, the argument from desire. And I also benefited from Lewis explaining certain essential Christian doctrines, the doctrine of the Trinity, uh, the doctrine of the person of Christ. and. So it, that was really the first big step in, in me coming to be aware of what historic Christianity was all about. And I became very interested in apologetics uh, because I was a philosophy student at the university. And uh, I had lots of discussions both with my professors and my fellow classmates. And we debated the existence of God, we debated uh, the truth of the various religions, religious pluralism. And it wasn't too long after that I, I became familiar with Walter Martin. Walter Martin is a, is a very important Christian apologist in America. He's now passed away, but he hosted the Bible Answer Man program. He was the original Bible Answer Man. And uh, I began attending his class. And of course, Walter was kind of the founding father of what we would call the counter-cult movement in the United States. Walter wrote a book entitled The Kingdom of the Cults, looking at groups like Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Christian scientists. And uh, it wasn't too long after that that I began working for Walter. And so I worked in, uh, at the Christian Research Institute and uh, was Walter's, uh, one of his research scholars. And uh, upon uh, the unfortunate passing of Walter, uh, later I, I hosted, uh, co-hosted the Bible Answer Man for a couple years. And it was at that point uh, in my life, my interest in apologetics, that I met Hugh Ross. And uh, Hugh had come over to CRI to discuss the issue of old earth creationism. And so the research staff held different points of view on that, that kind of controversial issue. So uh, uh, after I left CRI, I, I taught philosophy and religion. And uh, then Hugh Ross called me up and asked me if I would consider uh, coming on his team. And so for the last 15 years, I have been a, a senior scholar at Reasons to Believe. Uh, I'm the only non-scientist on the scholar team. Uh, my background is in philosophy and theology. So when we talk about the two books, uh, the, the uh, figurative book of nature and the literal book of scripture, my role is to kind of uh, tie those together in terms of looking at uh, the, the philosophical issues and, and the theological issues. And uh, uh, my job there, of course, involves uh, giving lectures and uh, engaging in debates. It also involves writing articles and, and books, uh, doing uh, radio programs some radio interviews, and of course, at times, uh, even television. So I've been engaged in the apologetic enterprise, I, I would think, for about 25 years uh, in a professional context. And uh, again, I owe my roots uh, really to my parents 
but also to uh, people like C.S. Lewis, who kind of uh, brought my attention that you could be a thinker and yet also be a devoted Christian. And uh, so that's, that's kind of uh, where I came from and, and how I got to where I am now. You know, I think one of, the, one of the early challenges that I had when I first became a Christian was uh, I attended a church and the church kind of gave me the impression that maybe my biggest fault was I thought too much. And uh, this created a consternation because when I was at the university, I noticed that many people at the university were not enamored by faith. And then at my church, uh, people were not enamored with ideas. And I thought, wow, I'm a, I'm, I'm a man without a country. Uh, my, my church doesn't want to, to talk about ideas and the school I'm attending doesn't want to talk about faith. And so I, I thought what I'll do is uh, when I'm at school, I won't say anything about being a Christian. And when I'm at church, I won't talk about philosophical ideas. And I can tell you, it almost caused me to give up my faith. I think that I had to know that somehow there was a bridge that could be built between faith and reason. I, I had to know that all truth was God's truth, and, and it had to make sense to me. And uh, fortunately, I, I had some people who recommended I begin reading some really thoughtful Christian theologians and apologists and philosophers. And, and I was encouraged to read people like uh, St. Augustine, uh, the great fourth century church father. And I read other people like Blaise Pascal and uh, St. Anselm. Um, uh, and what I began to realize is that they talked about something that became very important to me, and that is faith seeking understanding. I, I don't believe you can reason people into the faith. I believe that God's spirit brings people to faith. But I believe that, that reason and argumentation are powerful vehicles. They're tools that God's Spirit uses uh, to bring people to faith. And so uh, faith, faith is a gift of God, and faith can move beyond reason. But I, what I began to see in, in many of the great Christian thinkers was that, that faith never does any damage to reason, uh, that faith and reason are compatible. And uh, I, I began to recognize that uh, I really needed to understand the Christian worldview. I, I, needed, I needed to understand my faith, and to understand my faith, I needed to understand scripture. I needed to have an understanding of, of the, the historical nature of my faith, how, I had got, how we had gotten to the place that, that we were at. And I, I also realized that I, I needed to develop a, an understanding of, of theology. I, I, think, I think a mistake that sometimes people who are very interested in apologetics make is to not to tie their apologetics to a, to a deep biblical understanding. Um, and so uh, to be an apologist or to be a philosopher or to be a scientist or to be a historian I think we also need to have a little theologian in us where we are seeing the faith, recognizing it and how it applies. And so the idea of the Christian worldview, and uh, you know, I, I like to say that I think Christianity is three things. It, it's a set of beliefs, it's a collection of values, and it's a way of life. And it has to be all of those things, and, and probably in that order. It, it, it's first of all a set of beliefs. There are certain things about the gospel, Jesus's life, death, and resurrection, our, our affirmation of the Trinity, our, our affirmation of salvation by grace. But Christianity also involves uh, a collection of values, our, our moral principles, and what we value and, and how we believe them. And then, and then lastly, it, it's a way of living one's life. 
And uh, so I had to build that bridge, and it was a slow process, and sometimes a difficult process. But I remember being a very young man, wondering and doubting uh, and, and having consternation whether faith and reason could really be compatible. And so uh, I'm very thankful for many of the people that I have been able to, to read and talk to, both uh, Christians who lived long ago and Christians who live today. And I hope that my work and the work at Reasons to Believe is able to maybe help people who are very similar to me, who uh, were very vibrant in their faith, but were wondering, how does all this make sense? And, and can I really trust God? Uh, and are there good reasons uh, to, to put confidence in? And you know, that, that's the definition I think that historic Christians have given for faith. Faith is confident trust in a reasonable and reliable source. And the Bible is a reasonable and reliable source. God is a reasonable and reliable source. And you place your confidence in something you know that uh, is going to be very secure. You know, when I was growing up, I, I felt an abiding restlessness in my life. I, I was searching, uh, even as a very young man when I was playing baseball. My baseball coach nicknamed me Professor because I was always kind of asking the big questions of life, so to speak. And I felt, uh, I felt an emptiness. I, I felt kind of an aloneness. And... Um, the trouble was, even though I was searching, I wasn't sure what I was searching for. And that's, that's a very troubling sense, that you know something is, is, isn't quite right in your life, something is missing, but you're not sure what it was. I thought maybe if I met the, the right young woman uh, and, and married her, that that may be it. Or I thought if I became a professional baseball player that had a, a career, uh, that might be it, or if I developed a, a particular philosophy of life. So I wasn't really sure what I was looking for, but I knew that I felt a discontentedness, I felt a restlessness, and I, and I think that this really, uh, really kind of came in a, to focus in a powerful way. Uh, one of my older brothers um, had had a long battle with... Uh, Mental health challenges as, and, and also alcohol and drug abuse. Uh, this, was, this was the 1960s and, and 1970s in, in which in the United States uh, drug use had become very popular among young people. And my, my brother had uh, become addicted to a very serious drug. And, uh, and ultimately, I think there were a variety of factors, but uh, the mental health challenges, the drug use, uh, he ended up taking his life. And uh, that hit me like uh, a brick wall. And uh, what troubled me, I think, very deeply about it was I felt like I didn't really have any answers in life to offer him. I know that he was looking and, and searching. He felt hopeless and purposeless. And uh, what troubled me was that I didn't feel I had any answers uh, really to, to give him. And uh, I think the death of my brother and of course the, the great pain that my parents experienced and, and watching my parents, uh, kind of helplessly watching them grieve the, the death of their son, that really drove me to, to be serious about the big questions of life. I, I really began asking what in philosophy we call these existential questions. Why am I here? And who am I? And uh, what happens in death? Is, is there any life after death? Is, the, is there any ultimate meaning to life? And uh, I became really open. I think my heart and my mind were open, but I had to be convinced. I had to believe that there really uh, was truth uh, out there. And uh, again, it was, it was at that time that I became more open to the possibility of looking for uh, spiritual answers, and, and certainly by reading C.S. Lewis, and then later being exposed to uh, 
uh, Christian uh, leaders and ministers, that's when I, I really felt like the, the Lord had opened uh, my heart. And of course, uh, later in my life, I've written about that. And I have said that as terrible as it was and as painful as it was, and I, I would not wish that experience on anyone else, particularly on parents to see their, their child die. Um, I think that God powerfully brought good things out of that. Uh, it certainly got my attention and it, and it certainly caused me to look deeper and uh, to kind of let the superficial issues of life pass by. And so I became very serious. And uh, again, while that was a very difficult experience, I believe that God brings good things out of difficult times. And uh, so I think the Lord really used that period of suffering to get my attention and to focus it upon the gospel of Jesus Christ. I think that these, these questions, uh, again, in philosophy, we call them the big questions of life. These are the ultimate issues. Um, those became very serious for me, uh, upon, uh, particularly upon the death of my brother. And I was very eager uh, to try to find answers to these questions. And uh, by reading C.S. Lewis by being around other Christians who were able to share their faith with me, uh, talk to me. Um, my interaction with Walter Martin, uh, again, the Bible answer man, he would answer questions about the Bible, about Christian theology. There was a constant discourse about how the Christian worldview would explain certain things. And and so uh, being a philosopher by nature, this kind of Socratic approach was uh, very, very important to me. And, and even in my own uh, professional life and ministry, uh, as a teacher, I, uh, for five years I taught uh, courses in philosophy and religion at a public college. And inevitably the students would discover that I was a Christian. They would either hear me on the radio or they would uh, hear a book about a book that I had written, or I may say something in class, and they would come to me and ask me, well, you're a philosopher, you teach logic, you teach the world's religions, what, what is it that convinces you that Christianity is true? And what I discovered is that these young college students, they had many of the very same questions that I had. They were asking questions about meaning and uh, purpose, and they were raising questions, well, but why, there are so many religions, why Christianity? Um, the problem of pain and suffering and evil was, a, was another series of, of questions that, that would arise. And so, uh, in fact, through that five-year period, I spoke to dozens and dozens of students, and I noticed that, that really the questions were the same. They would ask the same types of questions. How can I believe in a God I can't see? Um, what about the challenging areas of Christianity? How can God be one in three? How can Jesus be both God and man? How about the problem of the other religions? How about the issue of the problem of pain and suffering? And in fact, that led me to, to write a book on that very topic. I have a book entitled, Without a Doubt, Answering the 20 Toughest Faith Questions. And of course, there is this game called 20 Questions, where you you know, you try to raise someone's consciousness by asking them very directed and specific uh, questions. I think that, uh, I think it's very important that uh, when we talk with people about the faith, that we're able to answer their questions, that we're able to guide them and direct them so that they can, they can hear how the Christian worldview uh, explains the nature of reality, how the Christian worldview views human beings explains uh, the ultimate issues. And uh, that's become a, a critical part of what I do. Um, I believe, I, I'm not so much a preacher as I am a teacher, and I have a, a Sunday class, and uh, the first half of the class is, is devoted to answering people's questions. They can, they can come to the class and ask any question they want, and largely because that's what I wanted, that's what I needed. I needed a place I could go 
and ask a thoughtful uh, Christian, hey, how do you resolve this issue? Or what about, how, how is the biblical tension here understood? Or what's the biblical perspective on this? And so it has become a, a very important part of uh, my ministry, uh, both at my local church. It's also a very important aspect of reasons to believe. We believe that uh, uh, thoughtful people will, will ask these questions and we believe that Christianity is true and therefore it can hold up to scrutiny. It, you can ask the difficult questions uh, and you can find uh, satisfying answers. And so uh, that process that began with me as an adolescent and continued into my college years of, of seeking answers uh, really has become an important part of my overall uh, approach to apologetics uh, enterprise and, and ministry.